All right, I'm trying to make this kind of short and sweet. So um, some of this stuff you can check out on your on your own if you need more information. Now, the two things we're going to talk about here, just to get this point across, we want to uh, just review just very briefly is. Digestion and absorption of food is the primary thing we're trying to, to uh, look at here and examine, okay? Now, just very briefly, let me try and give you this quick overview of how the shit works. I know you already know it. It's common sense. You chew the food. The pieces of food are cut and torn, ground with smaller particles. Uh, saliva is secreted mixed with the food in the mouth. Saliva is alkaline. contains an enzyme called amylase. The breakdown starch also contains antibiotic-like substances, white blood cells, help destroy microorganisms like bacteria and viruses in the food. Proper chewing of filled facil food facilitates digestion by en ensuring that the digestive enzymes are mixed intimately with the food particles. All right. So these digestive enzymes, um, food passes through the stomach and blah, blah, blah. In the stomach, gastric juices containing hydrochloric acid and enzymes are secreted to sterilize food and to break down protein. Stomach also uh, secretes an enzyme which helps the digestion of protein. Uh, all right, some of the things that can limit Limiting factors in digestion are the availability of water and that the enzyme has to move from molecule to molecule, unlocking it. Digestive enzymes work better and faster in a liquid medium. Okay, so I can get into this thing here and read and, uh, and quote to you uh, how, many, how much water you need for every molecule how many enzymes are in a molecule and how much water you need and all this other horse shit, but it's just, suffice to say water, these, these are the two limiting factors. So basically these are the two limiting factors of how well you're going to process and digest your food. And uh, how well you process and digest your food equals how much of this shit you're going to absorb basically. Okay? I mean everything is rated, the proteins in particular, that's what we're going to be concerned with right this minute. If you're trying to gain weight or lose weight, that's a whole other matter. You're going to be concerned with other macros. No question, and we're going to get into that in other videos in its place. You know, covering if you're trying to get bigger, if you're trying to get smaller, one way or the other. And there's two different things you want to look at. Um, but you have to have the same basic understanding and overview. So that's where we're at here. Uh, so you know that the protein is uh, given a B... Uh, it's given a BV, which is a biological value. It's how they rate the uh, bioavailability of these proteins, how well they can be assimilated by the body. Give you an idea of what this shit means. Basically, is that uh, whey protein isolate formulas can have a maximum BV of 157. Whey protein concentrate can have a BV of up to 104. Compare this to the BV of red meat and milk at 80 and 91, respectively. So that's enough to tell you how far superior the whey protein is. So right out of the gate, like I keep hammering home again and again over the past oh, well over a year, is um, the biological value of the whey protein is so much higher. So that means that um, gram for gram... The protein that you're getting out of that whey isolate, for example, whey concentrate is also higher than like meat or anything else or any fucking other food source. So if you need to make every gram that you eat count, if you're trying to eat the minimum amount of protein and get maximum fucking result out of it, maximum fucking distance out of it, right, the biggest bang for the buck, whey isolate. Whey concentrate is still going to be a higher biological value than meat, than milk, than any other fucking food. Okay, so this horse shit that protein powders are not food, and you need real food, is fucking idiotic. Okay, it's imbecilic. It is not even correct. Protein powder is real food. Now, it's a whole other issue we're not going to consider here is the honesty or dishonesty of various protein companies. Okay, if you buy it and it's not what's in it, you know, it says one thing on the label and that's not what's inside of it, that's a whole other fucking issue. 
But right now we're going to consider that you found an honest company and the powder, it is what it says it is in there. And when you're consuming what you believe to be 50 grams of whey isolate, even if it's only 40 grams of whey isolate, it's still going to be far superior, far superior to, uh, you know, with being that the whey isolate is uh, as much as uh, 157 biological value compared to meat and milk, which is 80 and 91, right? So even milk is higher than meat. Okay, now let's move on to the second thing to consider. Liquids are fucking absorbed more easily and readily by the body than solids. Now, doesn't that make common sense to you? You need all this water for digestion, for these enzymes to work in. Milk. If you drink your milk, that milk is going to be more easily absorbed by the body than eating solid foods. Okay? Now, that's just very basics. Nothing earth-shattering there. Nothing... Um, I'm not trying to come up with anything that's uh, going to create some kind of great big fucking uprising right in the industry. This is common sense. This is very simple. So we're on board so far, right? Haven't said anything ridiculous yet that you can't believe. All right, so then let's move on to this part. The process of digestion. Uh, we don't need to talk about that. Sweets. So how long does all this take to happen? Let's get, that on, let's get that out of the way. Sweets, fruits, and highly processed starch are digested and absorbed within three to four hours. High protein and fatty foods take 12 to 18 hours for digestion and absorption. Salads and high fiber foods take 12 to 24 hours for digestion and absorption. Remember that from this. High fiber foods. That's the longest amount of time for digestion and absorption of any food you can eat. If it's high fiber, it's going to be slow digesting, a long time to absorb and digest that food, to digest and absorb that food. You're going to need to know that as we continue, especially later on when we get into losing weight and gaining muscle, etc., etc. All right, next thing I want to talk about really quickly here, touch on is uh, <clears throat> this study. The goal of this study here was... Um, Problem is, when they drank, yeah, if you drink uh, 50 grams of whey protein, now this is an isolate, all right? So we're just talking about some kind of whey concentrate, most likely, okay? Which understand already that the biological value of the whey isolate is like 157, and the concentrates can be as high as 104. So you already understand, they're not looking at the, the, the fucking pinnacle of the protein you could possibly obtain and put down your fucking gullet. We're talking about, you know, something with you know, a 50 point and lower biological value, but still higher than meat, higher than milk. Milk's higher than meat, but higher than milk and meat. Um, if you took in 50 grams of, uh, you know, whey concentrate, whey protein, it took 1.5 hours before any of this shit got anywhere near digestion and absorption, before any of it did. And it turns out that the limit that they came up with in this study is you could absorb 10 grams per hour. You could absorb 10 grams per hour. So a 50 gram shake, five hours. Five hours. All right? So that's the point to the study. They said to themselves, okay, well, is there anything we can do to speed this process up? Can we absorb more of this more rapidly? What can we do? So, of course, they're figuring what are the limits? Water. And enzymes, digestive enzymes, two key players in particular, and I'm going to be listing them uh, in the description of this video, so you guys can go out and check this shit out yourself, and if you want to get a hold of and supplement this into your diet with your protein, you can do it. That's what I do. You've heard me say it before about digestive enzymes, but I've only, you know, glazed over it. I haven't really explained it, so that's what I'm trying to do here, clarify things a little bit. Somebody asked me about it, so I neglected to point all this out and be more specific, so that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so what they did was, the groups that they took, they split them in half, and I mean, first they, they did like a double blind thing, all this crap, so they did a bunch of shit first where everybody in the group had just the whey protein, and then they, they checked to see what happened, and how many hours it took, and how much was absorbed, and blah, 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 and then, uh, they went on to split the group in half, um, 
They actually split it into they split it into thirds. Excuse me. Part of the group had just straight up um, whey protein. This probably concentrates, not isolate. Um, then part of the group had uh, 2.5 grams of enzymes with the whey, and the other part of the group had five grams of enzymes with the whey. Now. Uh, without any enzymes, there was only a paltry 30% increase in amino acid levels. And this is after four hours. After four hours of ingestion, the group that just had the whey with no enzymes, no additional enzymes besides what's available in their own body, they uh, were able to elevate the amino acid levels, their amino acid levels, by 30%. Now, with 2.5 grams of enzymes supplemented, along with the protein intake, the amino acid levels were 110% higher. That's a hell of a jump. That's with 2.5 grams of enzymes added along with the ingestion of your whey. Um, with 5 grams of enzymes, even better, 127% higher. 127% higher if you took if they took five grams of digestive enzymes, these two different enzymes, and I'll list them at the in the description here, they uh, it was 127 percent higher amino acid level in their body after four hours. So that would be the way to go. So if you want to get everything that you're putting down your throat, then you want to try and uh, maybe get a hold get a hold of some digestive enzymes and supplement that along with your uh, your protein intake. So what I would do is look for some proteins, there are proteins out there that I've had previously that actually contain digestive enzymes in the protein, they're already in the protein. Now, the two main key players that were used in the study are the two that I'm gonna list, the two enzymes. So me, that's what I'll double check now and make sure that that's what's in my protein powder and the amounts that I need it to be in there. You know what I'm saying? If it's 25 grams promised per scoop, then if I'm gonna take two scoops, which would be 50 grams, I wanna make at least five grams of these enzymes, and I know which two enzymes need to be present in that amount. You know, a combination of two should be five grams. That's what I'm doing. Now, to each his own. If you don't wanna do that, if it's getting too complicated for you, don't worry about it. But it's just a, just a suggestion just another potential way that you can get more for your dollar and more bang out of your out of your supplementation, out of your protein intake, even if it's solid food, which, in my opinion, if you're really trying to put some muscle on, if you're not fucking around with whey isolate, you're not serious. You're not as serious as you could be. I mean, and, and that's no crime in that, okay? There's no crime in that. There are some things that I like to do that I'm not as serious as people that are like obsessed with that particular hobby or whatever or endeavor, okay? This just happens to be something that clearly I'm a little bit more involved in, a little more interested in, and take a little bit more seriously. And there are a lot of guys out there much more serious than me about it. That's for damn sure. Because it's not one of my biggest priorities in life, trust me. But I, you know, the digestive enzyme thing, I'm down with that. It's good to go. Uh, so I'll leave it in the, in the uh, description of the video, the information that you need to know. Considering the biological value of the whey, if you're talking about, you know, we're talking about getting big on the cheap, and trying not to, to, you know, to spend so much money that it's bleeding you dry, all right? Now, trust me, I, I understand where you're coming from when you say, how do I know what protein I can trust? You know, how the hell, do, I don't know, okay? You're, 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 it's a leap of faith no matter what you do. It's a leap of faith no matter what you do. I guess you can Google and read reviews and you can see if any of them have been tested, independently tested and, you know, all that shit. I know Labrata has all kind of independent testing, you know, so that's why I use that right now and I've been using it for a while. Um, I don't know why he doesn't have any digestive enzymes in there. I may even write him and ask him why. I think it's a pretty good idea that he throws them in there, see what his opinion is on it. But uh, if you're, you know, you want to get it all from solid food, then that's fine too. But if you're trying to get, you know... You know what I'm saying? There are guys out there that they don't want to just gain a little bit of muscle. They want to be fucking freaks. If you're trying to be that, and it's not everybody's cup of tea, and I'm not saying that if that's you and you want to look like me, 
then you must be super cool or something, or that makes you more manly than the next guy that doesn't care or whatever. I'm not saying that at all. It absolutely, one doesn't have anything to do with the other, has nothing to do with it. There are plenty of guys, big as me and bigger, that ain't worth a shit as human beings. There are plenty of guys that are smaller than me, ain't worth a shit. And there are plenty of guys that are bigger and smaller than me either way, that are awesome people, that are incredible people. You know, they put me to shame as far as what kind of good, decent people they are. So there's no correlation. It has nothing to do with it, all right? So if you, you know, you, you, whatever. I'm just saying, if it's your interest and it's what you're trying to do, I would definitely be fucking around with some way isolate because with that high biological value of that, you can't reproduce that. So if you're trying to save as much money as possible and you're only going to allot yourself 200 grams of protein a week, a day, or 250 grams a day, then how much of that 250 grams do you want to get? You know what I mean? You're not getting anywhere near 250, and neither would I. I'm not, gonna, I'm not getting anywhere near what I'm putting in me. But if I can improve, if I can, like, by leaps and bounds, improve how much I'm getting out of it, Christ, I could take in even less protein than that and actually do the same, do the same with much less protein. So that's a good and a win all around. It's much less shit on my digestive system, you know, almost literally. It's much less fucking money that I got to spend to buy this crap. Okay, so like your way isolate, you're going to get more out of that. There's just no other way to put it. It is what it is. You can't turn back. You can't change it. It is what it is. All right, you're going to get more out of that. Now, yeah, you need a broad spectrum of diet. Yeah, you want to eat for pleasure too. You don't want to just eat because you think it's a fucking job. Because it's not, unless it is your job, which it's not my job, right? But uh, way isolate, man, I think that nothing touches it. But even if you just go with doing a complete solid foods, and you want to get your protein that way, you know, I get plenty of mine that way also. I get the majority of mine that way, but I, I still, you know, drink probably way isolate at least once, sometimes twice a day. Then you're going to want to uh, maybe do some digestive enzymes so that you can get most out of what you're buying. You can get more out of what you're paying for. It's kind of like putting gas in your car. You're going to spend the same amount. Now, are you going to be happy because you're getting 14 miles per gallon when you can be getting 28 miles per gallon? You know? That's all I'm trying to say. All right, that's it for now. I hope somebody got something out of that. I'm just trying to make some of these things a little bit shorter so that I don't have to, you don't have to sit here and hang out with me all night long and hear me ramble on. Have an awesome night. I'll be back shortly.